What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about an extension that I'm really excited about that allows you to extrude faces using just lines in SketchUp. And before we get started, I do want to take a second to thank my supporters on Patreon. They selected this extension. Um, my supporters on Patreon get to vote on which extension of the week I'm going to cover every week. So if you're interested in uh, voting on those extensions, you like what I'm doing on this channel and you'd like to support me, please check out that link in the notes down below. So this week's extension, selected by my Patreon supporters, is Extrude Tools. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Plugin name, Extrude Tools. Plugin developer, TIG. Plugin cost, it's free. Please make sure to donate to your developers. Where can you get it? You can download this extension from the Sketchication extension warehouse. Um, you can also check out the link in the notes down below. Tool functions. I'm actually really excited about this extension. I wanted to review it a lot sooner, but it never really got updated to work with SketchUp 2017, so I couldn't really do any tutorials with it. Now, Tig has updated it for SketchUp 2018. However, he has noted that some of the things he had to do to get it working with 2018 made it more unstable, so he warns to save your models often to avoid losing any of your work. It sounds like especially using the undo functions in some of these tools can make your models unstable. That being said, this is an incredible set of tools that I'm really excited to have back and working in SketchUp. So the way this extension works is it allows you to extrude faces from lines instead of just doing it from faces using a tool like the Follow Me tool. So I figured I'd just kind of walk you through each tool and show you how each one of them worked. So tool one is Extrude Edges by Rails. Extrude Edges by Rails allows you to take an edge or a profile and extrude that along a pair of lines or rails um, in order to extrude it into a face. So for example, if I was to run Extrude Edges by Rails, it's going to give me a couple different options. The first thing it asks for is the profile curve. This is the curve that it'll extrude along the lines. Then it asks for the first rail and the second rail. So in this case, I'm going to click on this line and then this line. And the last thing it's going to ask for is the melding profile curve. What this means is this is asking if there's another profile on the other side that you want this to merge into. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. In this case, we're just going to click on our original line in order to extrude this. You'll get a series of options in here for reversing directions and reversing faces and quad faces and deleting the original edges. In this case, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say yes. You can see that reverse the faces. If you, say, if you select the quad faces option, this will get rid of all the diagonal lines, which gives you much cleaner meshes. And it'll also give you the option to erase the original curves. And I usually say no because I like to keep those just in case I want to try something different with them. So that's a series of options that you're going to get every time you use this, every time you use this tool. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate now what the melding profile would do. And just to note, this is a pair of arcs that have been welded together using the weld extension. So I'll try to link to that in the notes down below as well. But in this case, I'm going to run extrude edges by rails. I'm going to click on my profile. I'm going to select my two rails. And if you remember the last time we selected this line it, to be our melding profile, so we were saying there wasn't really anything on the other side we wanted this to meld into. Well, in this case, we're going to select this arc. And we're going to say no, yes, yes, no. And so you can see if you compare these two lines, this one basically took this curving line and extruded it along or moved it along the end of these rails as well. And this one, it took our curved line and it melded it into the curve on the other side. So you can see how you can adjust the way that faces that are created work using the melding profile. The second tool is Extrude Edges by Rails to Lattice. This works in a similar fashion to the first tool, but it adds something at the end. So if you run this, you're going to get the same series of options. It's going to ask you to select your profile curve. It's going to ask for your two rails. It's going to ask for a melding profile curve. So same as before. And then it's going to give you a series of options in here. And so basically what it's asking you is what it wants you, what you want it to use to create a lattice. In this case, I'm going to select profile slash rails and hit OK. 
and it's going to give you two options. It'll either allow you to create a, a lattice using a series of lines or in 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and click 3D and I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to select yes for erase coplanar edges no for reverse faces and then if any of you remember my um, tutorial on the extension lattice maker um, this is basically going to take all of these faces and use them to create a lattice so and you can tell this to create like a material so like for example I could come in here and tell it to make the pain material glass and so what this is going to do is for each one of these it's going to offset it and also give it a depth and create kind of a pain so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see it's processing down at the bottom, but what that's going to do, I'm going to say no to erase original curves, is that's going to create a lattice using the lines that we created with our rails. And so you can do this for more complex shapes as well. So like for example, if I select this again and run this over here, we're going to pick the one line, and then we're going to pick our two rails. And one thing I did not do is I did not weld these lines into a single line. So that's going to be important. You're going to want that. You're going to want to make sure these are complete curves. So if you had to do this with multiple points like I did, make sure you weld them together. But now you can come in here and you can select your profile. You can select your two rails. You can select your melding profile. We're going to click OK. We're going to say lattice is 3D. Yes to erase coplanar edges, yes to reverse faces. And we'll just kind of see what we come up with. So in this case, you can see that our diagonal lines didn't get erased. And so what this did is this created a lattice um, using all of the lines in here. So you can see how all of these have the diagonal line in here as well. So you can adjust those settings and do different things with this, but that's how the rails um, to lattice works. Um, the next option is extrude edges by loft. This is very similar to the curve aloft um, lofting. And so basically what this one does, if you click on that, is it's gonna ask you to select your curve. So I'm just gonna click on all of these curves and then I'm just going to hit the enter key and it's going to ask how many segments per section so this is asking basically how many line segments this wants how many line segments it should use to make up your mesh so in this case we're going to say 12 if you want like a finer mesh then you could pick a higher number but that would create more geometry and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and it's going to ask if we want to reverse our faces and I'm going to say no because the front face is already facing out I'm going to say yes to quad faces and I'm going to say no to erasing my original curves. I'm going to kind of move this off to the side because you can see this is very similar to something that like Curvaloft would create. So if I use Curvaloft and I come in here and I select these four lines and I use the loft by spline function, it'll do the same kind of thing where it'll create a mesh along this face. And you can up the number of segments so in this case I'm gonna pick 12 and so that gets me pretty close to what this creates and you can see how the meshes get created in a little different fashion so they look a little bit different and Curvaloft gives you the option to um, adjust the way that those all work so for me I'm probably not gonna be using this function of extrude tools that often just because I kinda like what Curvaloft does instead but this definitely gives you another option for lofting lines the fourth option is extrude edges by edges. And so the way this one works is this one will extrude a series of edges by, by another group or another line. So in this case, what this one requires is it requires you to have um, two different groups of stuff in your model. And so like for example, and these have to be groups, they can't be individual geometry. So like for example, I've got this line that I kind of exploded as segments and then I brought together as a group and then I've got this line where I did the same thing. So what this one requires is it requires two groups of input. And so you select them both and then you click on it and it's going to ask you a couple different things. If you want to orient your faces, I'm going to say no. Reverse your faces, I'm going to say no. Intersect with self, no. Erase coplanar edges. You can say yes, but I don't really see any of these. And then triangulate faces. I'm going to say no because I like this uh, quad geometry. And so 
what this did, and it kind of puts this off to the side, which is kind of odd. Um, it doesn't put it kind of quite where your where your groups are, but you can see what this did is this basically took this edge and it extruded it along this edge. So in this case, what you can do is instead of having multiple different rails, you could use this to create like a single curve and then um, have another curve that you're going to kind of extrude everything along. So that's definitely an option for this one. So the next option is extrude by vector. So extrude by vector is very simple. So the way extrude by vector works is basically you take an edge. So like if I take this edge and I select it, it'll basically allow me to extrude this edge in one direction. So it's basically the it's basically the push pull tool. It's basically the push pull tool, but it allows you to do that with edges instead of faces. So I can do the same thing for this object that I welded together. I could just take this point and I could just extrude it along the green axis. So that's that's really good for taking flat profiles without having to like offset these and use the push pull tool in SketchUp to create um, different faces. Extrude edges by vector to object allows you to extrude a series of faces up until they run into another face and it'll detect when they collide with that face and stop the extrusion. So like for example this is the group that I created in the first object um, or in the first example as a part of extrude edges by rails. So the way this works is if you select all of these different objects and then you run extrude edges by vector you can click on this point it's going to ask for your first um, the first edge of your vector, but you can see how when I pull this up, it's showing me the intersection points between these edges and this object. So basically what I can do is I can move my mouse all the way above this and then I can click. Well, what that's going to do, and you can see how one of these is inside the, or outside that face so it didn't quite work. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to extrude that up until it runs into this face. So you could use this to create a series of columns that run into an organic face or something like that. This is actually a pretty cool one, especially if this object, and let's try something real quick. I'm going to smooth this object. But especially if you were to take an extension like joint push pull, so especially if you were using an option like joint push pull to give this a little bit of thickness, so if I was to push pull it up, and I don't really like what I did there. So especially if I was to use an extension like joint push pull to give this some thickness, you can see how you could use this to create your series of columns really easily without having to do the whole intersect with model thing. So I actually really like this piece of this extension. I find that very helpful. Um, I'm excited to see what else we could do with that one. Extrude edges by lathe is very similar to using the follow me tool um, and rotating an object around in a circle uh, to create a rotated extrusion. This just allows you to do it using a line instead of a face. So like for example, if I was to take this object, pick uh, extrude edges by lathe, it's going to ask you to select a polyline. So I'm going to select this line and it's going to ask for the arc center point. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this point and see what we come up with. And then we're going to set the axis of rotation and you can see what that'll do is that'll take that line and that'll rotate this. And it's going to ask you what angle you want this along. So like for example, if I was to set this at 30 degrees, it would only extrude this at 30 degrees along that red axis. Or I could set it at 60 or 90. So you can use this to basically extrude an edge along a profile like this. Um, and then you can do a double click in order to confirm it. Usually I end up saying yes to the coplanar edges, no to the reverse faces, go ahead and yes to the smooth edges. So that'll make this a smooth object. And then I'm going to say no to explode my group. But you can see how this creates this object. So you can use that to basically lay the line in a circle if you want to do that. So extrude edges by face, basically what that'll do is that'll take an object um, it'll take a face and you can extrude it along multiple different lines. So like for example, if I was to select this first curve that I created, actually we're going to run the extent we're going to run the tool. You're going to click on extrude edges by face and it says you need to start off by selecting your face and also your edges. 
So you can see how when I selected that, that basically extruded this object along this edge. Even though this is flat on the ground, it'll extrude it all the way along this face. And theoretically, and I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, theoretically you can use this along multiple different pieces. So when it says path is discontinuous or branched, if you say yes, theoretically it's supposed to be able to extrude it along multiple different faces. I haven't been able to get it to work. But theoretically, that functionality is in there. So if you guys can figure out how to get that work, leave a comment below and let me know how, because that would be super useful to be able to extrude this along multiple different pieces at once. Extrude edges by faces to object. What this one is supposed to do is this is supposed to allow you to take a pair of faces and draw a line between them and have it kind of meld these two objects together. Theoretically, I actually have not been able to get this one to work. So if I click on this one, I select this face, I select a curve or a rail, just like we have before, then I select this other face. Um, and when I run it, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be working. So what it does for me is it creates this, these kind of guide points along here, but it doesn't actually meld the two objects. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with this one, but I can't quite get it to do what it's supposed to do. Um, usually what I would end up doing for an extension like this is I would probably end up using curve aloft anyway. So I would just select these two objects and use the loft along path option. You can see how what that'll do is that'll actually meld this along here. So if you can't get this one working, try Curveloft's loft along path option and see if you can get that to work. All right, so this next tool is extrude edges by rails by face. So I know that sounds complicated, but basically what that one does is that'll, uh, that'll do what the first one does. So it'll do the extrude edges by rails. So it's going to ask you to select your face and then it's, you're just going to do the same thing where you extrude your edges by rails to create this face. You go ahead and click on this. And what it's going to ask you is what, what you want to create your rib from. So basically your extrusion object that you're going to extrude. So in this case, I'm going to say rib from profiles and rails and click OK. Basically what that did is that took my flat face that I had selected over here and it created your kind of, um, it created all of your lines that it would have on this first tool, but then it extruded this object along all these different lines, these different paths. So basically you could use this to create things like complex steel looking structures. The one thing I don't really like um, is these aren't in here as individual groups. I don't know if you can set it up to do that or not. You can see how this is all in here as just kind of its own geometry. But it does give you an option to do a lot of extruding of profiles along these different edges really quickly and really easily. So I think this kind of has some cool uh, possibilities. And then the last one is very simple. Uh, basically what it does is it allows you to extrude edges by an offset. So if I select these two edges, for example, and I click six inches, um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to take this line and it's going to extrude it in one direction or the other. So this is a lot like if you were to use the offset tool and then have to draw a line in here to finish out the face, this will do that for you based on your line. So like for example, if I was to come in here and select this object and do an offset of negative six, it would offset it to the other direction. So you can use this to create faces from multiple different lines really easily. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Are you excited about this tool set being back? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.